you want to know why Canada is so expensive? Do you want to know why everything in Canada costs so much? Do you want to know why the price of everything is going up? Not just real estate, but everything. Food, clothing, anything you need, materials, construction, anything so expensive. I'm going to tell you right now. My name is Yossi Kaplan. I'm a Toronto realtor and a mortgage broker, and I talk about real estate and economy. And today I'm going to talk, why is Canada so expensive? All right, there are three main reasons why Canada is so expensive. We're going to go one by one. It's going to be a simple video. Even if you don't know economy or real estate or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll explain to you exactly how it works. Okay, you ready? Very simple. Number one. Number one, everything in Canada is so expensive is inflation. What is inflation? Inflation means that my dollar today can buy, let's say, a popsicle. And tomorrow I go to the store and say, no, now you need a dollar ten. You need more money to buy the same popsicle. But wait, it's just a bunch of water and sugar and some coloring. I mean, I even look and like they all have the exact same sugar. It's the exact same thing. What am I paying for more? No, that's how it is. But I didn't get uh, my salary up by 10%. I didn't make 10% more money, but I got to pay for the popsicle 10% more, 10 cents more. It was a dollar yesterday and it's a dollar 10 today. Ah, it become more expensive. You notice the price of lemons? That's one thing I always compare. If you go to Loblaws, one lemon will cost you $1.29. No wonder Loblaws is owned by the richest families in Canada. They also own Shoppers, Shoppers Drug Mart. But if you go to Chinatown, you can get three lemons, sometimes four, for one dollar. All those lemons are not the same. Yes, they are the same. They all come from the Ontario Food Terminal, and the lemons are the lemons are the lemons. They don't only come from Canada, they come from another country, okay? So inflation, the price of everything goes up. Now. What was in uh, Chinatown, four lemons for a dollar, yesterday will be three lemons today. What was in Loblaws, 89 cents for one lemon is 99 cents. And then I've seen as high as $1.29 for one lemon in Loblaws, okay? So the price is going up and up and up on everything. Do you notice that when you go buy some food, maybe you buy a falafel wrap, maybe you buy a taco, whatever it is, the price always goes up. It just creeps a little bit. The price of the TDC goes up just a little bit. It may be only a quarter, but it's over $3. That's about 8%, 9%, right? So that's, that's a high. That means that the cost of living <clears throat> is going up in Canada, especially in Toronto where I live, um, by probably like 10% every year. Wait a second, Yossi, what are you talking about? I don't make that kind of money. You know, last year I was making uh, $14 an hour, and this year I'm making $14.50, and next year I'm, I'm making $15. Or oh, last year I made $50,000 and they gave me a 2% raise, $1,000. And out of that $1,000, half, half of that about goes to taxes and whatever. Uh, so I got 500 bucks left, 600, whatever. So basically you're making 50 bucks a month more. That's, you know, $12 a week more. Is that going to help you? No, it's not going to help you. So you have less and less money all the time. You may have the number of the same amount of money, but hey, that money cannot buy the same lemon anymore. You need more money to buy the lemon. You need more money to buy the popsicle. And of course, you need more money to buy the house or the condo. And you've seen what happened to the price of condos and houses, especially in Toronto and the GTA in the last three years. It went up by 24, 25% every year for three years in a row. And what happens on average is the cost, the price of real estate in Toronto in the 416905 and some other cities too is going up, doubling itself every seven to eight years. Every seven to eight years, the house used to cost half a million bucks, now costs a million. The condo was 300,000, now costs 600. Now, can you double your money? Can you double your savings every seven or eight years? Of course you can. It's not possible. That's part of the design, okay? So what happens is we're moving to a state where you have the money and you can buy something or you just don't have enough money. And then you, the quality of your life always goes down and down and down. You can buy less or you gotta need to buy lesser quality stuff. And you know what happens when you buy lesser quality, you gotta buy more, so you're not saving anything, okay? So number one, cost. Number one reason why price in Canada goes up all the time is inflation. Now inflation is generated artificially. Inflation is artificial. The entire economy is really artificial. And what happens is the, the central bank, which is a private company, Okay, it's printing dollars and then it's selling the Canadian government, which buys them and then pays interest on that money. That's your deficit. That's a big portion of your deficit. I'm buying my own money from someone else. Does this sound crazy to you? <laughs> That's how it works. We Canadians do not print our own money. We buy our money from a private corporation who sells us the money, the people of Canada, for interest, for profit. 
that's why they don't like Bitcoin or any another sort of payment that will eliminate inflation. I can say, you know, I'm going to buy this car for one Bitcoin and next day I can sell the same car. You know, I even drive it for the same one coin, whatever it is. I don't care if it's called Bitcoin or whatever coin, Canada coin. OK, but the Canadian dollar is not Canadian. It's not even ours. That's a big problem. OK, so that's inflation. When you print more money, you put more money into the whole economy and the value of the dollar you had before now you have two dollars the value of each dollar is half so the price have to go up okay but you my friends <laughs> you're not making any more your salaries are the same the hourly rates are the same you know we're not making any more money because we live here we work here we pay taxes here so we personally always to blame there's nothing we can do about it okay so that's number one Number two is immigration. Now that's a hot topic. I'm an immigrant myself, as you can uh, probably understand from my accent, but it doesn't matter that we can't talk about it. We need to talk about it and we should talk about it. What happens is very simple. When immigrants come to Canada, now I came as a student, you know, I had no money. I just worked my way up and basically had three jobs for years on end to pay for everything. I had the nine to five job, the after hours job and the weekend job. And that's what I did as long as I remember in order to make it. Okay. But Let's say you can't do this because you have the one job and that's what you do and you have your family or you have a life or whatever. Um, you're not making any more money, okay? But an immigrant comes and immigrants usually we have, you know, first of all, they're going to have foreign funds, usually US dollars. And second, uh, immigrants that come to Canada have a lot of money because the Canadian government, unless you're a refugee, will not allow you to come unless you have some bunch of money. So that bunch of money usually shows up in the form of US dollar. And the US dollar, guess what? It's 35% more than our dollar. So people around the world, they used to um, calculate and work in US dollars, even where I come from, you know, it's all US dollars, although there's, there's a local coin, but who cares? It's US dollar. So you go, okay, I have a million US dollars. Hey, it's a 1,350,000 Canadian dollars. I just made $350,000 like this. <laughs> so I'll buy the million dollar house, and I buy myself an investment condo for 350. But a Canadian person that works here and make, makes the money in Canada, like I do, like you do, we don't have that 35% extra. So when immigrants uh, come to Canada, their money is worth more than ours. And that's a big problem. And I'm not against immigration, obviously I'm here, but the point is that we need to allow Canadians, people like us to live here and work here to have equal opportunities and that's we don't have so the moment you come you know the first generation immigrants to bring on the money but their kids unless their parents were smart and you know bought themselves some uh, assets uh, some cash flow assets whatever it is real estate businesses dividends it's many of those uh, options um, the moment you start to become a Canadian like the rest means you just work here and just make all your money here you're stuck and then the next uh, wave of immigrants the next generation of immigrants you basically you're going to suffer from that just as well because you ran out of US dollars if you have you don't have any more cash flow and all your cash flow is Canadian dollars you really become a Canadian and oh, that's my thing here okay and uh and you start to suffer okay that's a problem so inflation is number one with the value of your dollar goes down and down and down because we inject more money which is not even ours we need to buy and pay for that money interest into the economy and number two people that come into Canada and there's probably you know 300 to 400,000 of those every year so that you know a thousand people a day maybe come to Canada with bags of money but we don't have those kind of monies because that's US dollars they get 35% extra so they can buy a lot more than we do that's a problem because it's not equal um, many people will think it's not fair do you think it's fair you tell me Okay, here's another example. This beautiful Canada hat that I just purchased at Dollarama is made in China. This hat is made in China. It has nothing to do with Canada. I paid four Canadian dollars for it. I paid 13% 13 tax on it, uh, which the government took. And none of this money really stays in Canada. This is made in China hat. That money goes back to China. It's not staying here. Why? Because we don't manufacture anything here anymore. Okay, we're not making anything. So the Canada hat, the Canada flag, all the Canada trinkets that you saw on Canada Day a couple of weeks ago, you know, those are all made in China and other countries. That is ridiculous. And I have nothing against China, but 
They came with a hat to be made here. And it's okay with me if it'll cost $20 and not four. But I want to buy one good hat. I'm going to keep it forever. And I say, this hat was made in Canada. Well, this hat was not. Okay? And that's a problem. And of course, you know, if it's made in Canada or the U.S., you know, they have the same problem. Um, then it's supposedly more expensive. But there are ways that we can make things to cost less, maybe not as cheap, but less, and make them here, and keep the money here, and keep the jobs here, and keep Canada in Canada. Okay, so that's number two, the immigration. And what you see in Vancouver right now, if you're following the story, that's money that comes from China, mostly in other countries, and that's what's called dirty money. It's not money they're being paid tax on. It's money that really came from who knows where. Maybe they sold goods to Canada and U.S. and they talk, took that same money and actually bought property in the Canada U.S. Um, maybe it came because of some kind of illegal trade. I don't know where that money comes from. You know, I'm not, that's not my thing. But we all know that Canada is seeing a lot of dirty money and cash money, billions and billions of dollars buying properties here, making the price go up and up and up. So when the immig immigrant family comes to Canada and they have a million dollar U.S., you know, they can beat us to any deal because they can go, okay, we'll just, you know, that house will have multiple bids, but we can always buy a first. And, you know, it's okay. If I were to come to another country and I had a bunch of money, I would like to buy it the best I can. And I would love the fact that my money goes further and I would buy whatever I can. Obviously, I'm going to do what's best for me and my family and that's totally fine. But the response, the reaction from this is that... You know, the price around you, the prices around you is going up. So all these houses, and that's what happened in Vancouver, and they finally started to close, close the tap on it, and now we're seeing the price of Vancouver coming down. Now, Vancouver is not crashing. Vancouver is stabilizing to a price where it's affordable to the local market, and that's what it should be, okay? The price should be affordable to the local market. Another thing I should probably tell you is that, that current inflation in Canada is about 2.5% a year. That means that... Um, for if you had a dollar yesterday, today your dollar is worth 97.5 cents. You go, oh, what's 2.5%? Well, but you know, if you have a million dollars, now you lost $25,000, okay? So now you start to see, now you start to see the, as the numbers, and when you have a billion dollars, you lost $25 million. So now the numbers start to play, play there's a big game here because it adds up. And if it happens year over year over year, and I'll show you some of uh, my previous videos, you know, a dollar in the 70s is only worth two cents today. That means that if you stashed your dollars in the 70s and you saved it and you save it under the mattress and you save all the money, but that million dollars you had is only worth 20,000 today. Oh, that hurts. So there's third, there's, there's, there's a couple more reasons, but these are the main ones. And then I'm going to tell you what to do <coughs> and what options you have to beat the system. Okay. Um. <coughs> the last thing we have, you know, we have a supply and demand problem in Canada. And that because we just don't have enough beds. And I've said it, we need a million beds in Canada, maybe a million beds in Ontario. Toronto for sure needs 250,000 beds. And the rest of Ontario could use 250 beds. Another, you know, half, half a million beds around, uh, and when I say beds, I mean, I mean bedrooms, okay? It could be a condo, it could be a house, it could be a multiplex, it doesn't matter. Beds, rooms, people can live in. And they have to be affordable, and they, they, they got to be good, and they got to serve the purpose, okay? And of course, we want a design that is communal and helpful and does good for the people. But we don't have these units. So when those units come on the market, you know, the, you can ask anything because there's nothing else. So look at my own listings. I'm a real estate agent. I'm looking at my own listings and I've been raising my prices. Go back through videos why I'm raising my prices. Okay. The reason I'm raising my prices is because all prices go up because I told you inflation, immigration, supply and demand, all that stuff. So, but it doesn't make any sense because the pyramid at the top, the people that can pay, you know, at the very tip of the pyramid, it's very, very small. So if a two bedroom condo in Toronto costs a million dollars, you know, it becomes the city of the rich. And then, and I made a video called the city of the Toronto City of the Rich. And then what happens, everyone else becomes a renter for life, for life. That means that you cannot anymore buy in Toronto. Now you have to buy in the B areas, which means you've got to go to the suburbs. And I've been pushing a lot and promoting uh, Brantford, Hamilton, Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo, because these are quite close to here. 
and even go further to like St. Catharines, Fort Erie, or go east if you like. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not very fond of going east because the GM saga and all that, but you know, you may find a deal there and it's good for you and it's fine. Um, but to find a home in Toronto is becoming very complicated and very expensive. Even the old places are becoming so expensive that people are like scratching their heads and go, well, I can rent this place for three thousand a month, or thirty-five hundred a month, or I can buy it for eight hundred thousand. <laughs> what would you do? It's like, it's like, uh, what is that uh, phrase? Uh, the the worst of two, the the best of two worlds. I don't know. Like, very difficult decisions to make. And I've been talking to a lot of my clients, the investors that buy the condo, the flippers, they flip the houses, the assigners that buy the condos and then flip them as assignments. And we've been really working very good and very uh, systematically and smart to make sure we extract the maximum amount of value from their properties. So if you need to sell, you can call me and I'll tell you what it's worth and what can you do with the money once you sold it. Or if you want to buy, I can tell you where to buy, where's the next opportunity and where I believe you have an opportunity, okay? So talking about this, let's, uh, I want to move to solutions. What can you do if everything's going up, the price of everything doubles every seven or eight years, that's a big problem. But what you can do is this. You can invest in assets that appreciate just as much as the inflation or more, or more. I'll say it again. You can buy something that basically makes more appreciation than inflation. It's called to beat the inflation, okay? Um, another thing you can do is you can buy cash flow properties, cash flow assets. What's a cash flow asset? It's a rental property that makes you a bit of money every month. Okay, that's very popular in the States and it's starting to get in Canada. And I've been doing this for many years because that's how you survive as an immigrant. You buy a property and then you make the cash flow. And if you need to clean it yourself, you do it. If you need to fix it yourself, you do it. If you need to work three jobs, you do it. You do it, you do it. You must take actions. You got to do it. Okay, so that's what you got to do. Um, I got a lot of deals, very interesting. In Toronto, you can still get stuff for a thousand bucks a foot, which is still very reasonable because all the new construction is going for twelve to eighteen hundred dollars a foot. That means twenty to eighty percent more than what you can buy some of these properties still on the market. You can still get a one bedroom in Toronto for five hundred thousand, but not for long. Um, this time, summer of 2020, there will be nothing under 600,000 in these main areas. Whatever it costs 500 will be 600, I guarantee you. Now it's 20%, but, but the small units, the half a million dollar units or the 